Greetings and welcome. I want to welcome everyone to our very first program for God's Unchanging Word. Today's program, I want to talk about freedom, the return of Jesus Christ, and the 4th of July. Now, let me, let me begin this program because I want you to put your thinking caps on. I want you to be aware and begin to think about what does the scriptures tell us. Then I'm going to ask you some questions as we go through this today. I'm going to talk about what is freedom, the return of Jesus Christ, and let me throw something else into the mix. What does the Bible and Abraham have to do with the 4th of July? I want to talk about that today as we go through this program. There are literally thousands of churches and preachers all over the world who are preaching Jesus Christ. Who do you believe? Better yet, who can I believe to tell me the truth? Now, the Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5.21, it says, Prove all things, hold fast to that which is good. So what I want you to do from today forward and with all our programs, we're going to get you to think about what does the Bible have to say and let the Bible be our authority. Not a preacher, not Tom, not anyone else, but go back into the Bible and prove all things. Around the country, there's an awareness, an awakening. People are tired of being lied to by the government, by, by uh, you name it, people who, who have been told lies. They say, We're, we've had enough, and they're waking up. Well, I want to do that today on God's Unchanging Word to get you to think about what does the Bible say. Not what you've been taught from a child, because I'm going to show you something that may astound you as we go forward on this program. Now, let's begin July 4th, 1776. I determine, this is, this is just what I want to express to you, that this is the beginning of the closing chapter for the return of Jesus Christ. I want you to think about that. July 4th, 1776, what does that have to do with the return of Jesus Christ? There are two very specific reasons that I want to share with you why I'm calling this the closing chapter for the return of Jesus Christ. First, the first was a promise that God made to Abraham almost 4,000 years ago. We pick up the story in Genesis chapter 12 and verse 1. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, and to a land that I will show thee. And I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless you, and curse him that curses you, and in you shall all families of the earth be blessed. Now, when we look back through history, we'll find that no other time except for the establishment of the United States of America that we have seen the entire world blessed through the blessings of this nation. Not even Great Britain in their, in their, uh, their greatest power when they were around the world where they said that the sun never set on Britain. Has any nation in this world ever been blessed with the blessings that the United States has? Which brings me to the second question. The second question is this. Why wait so long to fulfill a promise that was made to Abraham? That promise was made almost 4,000 years. At any time through history, God could have taken a nation and blessed them for the blessings that all nations on this earth would be blessed. Why wait till now? Why wait for the United States? Well, if we look at history, you can see the way the United States is postured with the seas on both sides, protection from the north and the south, where the, the, this country had its freedom this nation, more than any other nation on the face of the earth throughout history, has had the opportunity for the freedom that July 4, 1776 began to bring about for what? The preaching, freedom, and particularly freedom of, in preaching the Jesus Christ in his return. Before this country was founded, no nation ever experienced the freedom that we experience in this country for our religious convictions to preach the truth the way the Bible says. No government controls this, this religion. That's gradually changing, which is part of the reason for God's unchanging word, so that we can hold fast to the truth that's once been delivered and never waver to the left and waver to the right. Now, why? Why must there be a preaching warning message before the return of Jesus Christ? Now, this is part of the second reason that this is the final chapter. Now, we get, a, we get an understanding through the prophet Ezekiel. Now, 
Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 1 says, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto you. Verse 2, And the Spirit entered unto me when he spoke unto me, and set me upon my feet, and I heard him that spoke unto me, Son of man, I send you to the, to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me. Now let's stop for a second. The message here is clear. God's taking this man and sending him to the children of Israel to warn them. They're a rebellious house. They have transgressed against God. But here's the problem. Ezekiel was already in captivity. That nation had already gone into slavery, into captivity. Ezekiel's message went to a house that was already gone. Why did God give this message to Israel, to Ezekiel then? Because it was for a later time. We understand when we look at the Bible, there's always the former and the latter. The type and the anti-type. This, this message here was for a later day in time. And if you look through the book of Ezekiel, you will see, without a doubt, it's talking about an in time message of a warning before the return of Jesus Christ. Now, this could not be accomplished unless there was a nation that was chosen, set aside, that had the blessings and the freedom the freedom to preach Jesus Christ's return unabated and, and without being controlled so that the message of this warning can get out. Now let's go on and see what he says. Verse 5. And whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall they know that there had been a prophet among them. Now, in the end time, you look at the, at the New Testament, when you see prophets... You, they're, they're in a different type of uh, category than we see the prophets of the Old Testament where God went one-on-one, -on -one, spoke directly to that individual, and he went out and warned. The word prophet or prophesying in the New Testament means inspired speaking. Through God's Holy Spirit, he inspires people to prophesy through inspired messages to be able to warn through the insight given to people through God's Holy Spirit. Now, that's what we are witnessing today beginning to take place around the world in God's churches, this warning message that's beginning to raise up again and to warn this nation. Now, he says this again in Ezekiel 33, verse 33. God gives us the same warning message a little later in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 33, verse 33. And when this comes to pass, and lo, it will come to pass, God says, then they shall know that a prophet had been among them. God talks about prophets in the New Testament, an end time message, different than they talk about prophets in the Old Testament. Whereas in the Old Testament, God would directly speak one-on-one -on -one with the prophet that they would send this warning message to. God would speak to him through vision, through dream, through direct word, through contact with his angels. In the New Testament, when you see the prophet, we talk about those who prophesy, those with inspired speaking, is those that God has through his Holy Spirit given the insight, the understanding, the wisdom, and, and the zeal to preach that warning message to warn the nation. And God's talking about here that there will be a prophet that had been among them. This way, there's no one can say, I didn't know. No one told me. I didn't know I was doing wrong. God says that they will know that there was a prophet among them so that no one would have an excuse that they didn't know they were doing wrong. So God says they will know that a prophet had been among them. Now we've got the sermon message, a full-length, one-hour sermon called Famine of the Word. Now, I'd like for you to take a moment, jot this down, and then when the program's over, write for this message. Go online. You can, you can find it on God's Unchanging Word. Write for famine of the Word. God tells us that before his return, after this message has gone out to warn this world, there will know a prophet had been among them. When things get so bad, they'll be looking for some help, looking to God, and they won't find any. You need to know about this message called Famine of the Word. It's absolutely free. We'll send it to you. Just simply write in, call, or go online and order it, and we'll get it to you as quickly as possible. Now, let me ask you another question. There are preachers all over the earth. Who do I believe? Now, that's a fair question. That's an honest question. Because if everybody's preaching Jesus Christ, they all have a different message, how can they all be right? Well, they can't be. 
Look what the Bible says. Remember, we're going back into the Bible. Let the Bible explain for itself what it has to say. Revelation 12, verse 9 says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast into the earth, and his angels was cast out with him. So here's the question. If the whole world is deceived, and everyone's going in the same direction, if you're going in the same direction with them, aren't you also going in the same deception? Of course. So how do you begin? What do you look for? Well, if the whole world's deceived, look to those whose message or messages are going against the mainstream or against the whole world. Now, that would be obvious. That would make sense. If everybody's going in this direction and is wrong, find someone who's going in that direction, a different direction, and that direction will bring you back to Scripture. The Apostle Paul, before his conversion, when he was Saul, when he was breathing out threats and slaughters upon God's people, he was looking for someone who said, who are of this way. And what do you mean by that? Look, look what the, the Bible says. Proverbs 14, 12 says, There is a way which seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So you might think you're doing this right, but the way you're going, mainstream, world's going this way, everyone's going that way, the ways thereof is death because the Bible says they're all deceived. So you could think you're doing right, but you're not. That means you've got to take your thinking caps, put them on, put aside everything you've been taught, go back into the Bible and prove your salvation, whether it be true or not. Now, in the book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 1 says, And Saul, yet breathing out slaughters, threatenings and slaughter, against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest, Verse 2, and desired him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way. He understood that the whole world was going in that direction. All the Jews were going in that direction. He was finding those who were going the other way. He was those who were looking at Jesus Christ for salvation. His way and that way alone. And he knew they were different. If you're going to be searching for God's truth, then you're going to find those which Jesus Christ calls the little flock. Not big flock, not great numbers, but the little flock. That's where you're going to be going because they're not going to be going mainstream. Therefore, most people will not want to go that way because it's not the easy path. It's a difficult path, but it's important. So important that this world's future depends upon what God's people does and the return of Jesus Christ. So he said, if he found any of this way, whether they men or women, that he might bring them bound into Jerusalem. Of this way. Acts 19, a little later in the book of Acts we read, But the Jews which believed not moved with envy and took unto them certain lewd fellows of a baser sort and gathered a company and set all the city in an uproar and assaulted the house of Jason and sought to bring them out unto the people. And when they found them not, they drew to Jason certain brethren and the rulers of the city, crying that they have turned the whole world upside down and have come here also. You will find God's people before the return of Jesus Christ, but the truth they're preaching through the inspired message, turning this world upside down, and the world's going to go after them. We see that in Revelation during the two witnesses and the persecution that's coming upon God's people. I want to close this out today with a little film clip to get you to think and look about the freedom that God's given to us in this great nation, why it was left for us, why it's so important, and why we here on God's unchanging word have focused on freedom as the beginning of our program, the return of Jesus Christ and God's holy word. And I'll be back in about one minute.
We are one nation under God. This nation was established, established under, under the, the freedom, under the religious freedom to believe and to preach Jesus Christ in his return. In this program, that's what we would dedicate ourselves to, the return of Jesus Christ. I'd like to close this segment of our program out with a psalm and dedicate this psalm to our people in this great nation. Psalm 33, verse 22. It says that may your unfailing love rest upon us, O Lord, even as we put our hope in you. We look around this nation. We look at the, the debt. We look at the crime. We look at everything that's going on within it. There is no hope other than the return of Jesus Christ. And we here on God's Unchanging Word put our hope in him, our creator, and our heavenly father, and our elder brother, Jesus Christ.